it starts letting me know. It's starting. All right. <clears throat> on the last, uh, on the other video, the clay washing video, uh, I was going to turn a piece of pottery to uh, finish the uh, video, but um, we had a problem that come up and I wasn't able to finish turning the, the pot. So uh, today I want to do a, uh, a video uh, strictly uh, just of turning a piece of pottery. And right now what I'm doing is wedging the clay uh, to get the clay ready to be put on the wheel. And uh, this right here makes it uh, uh, well, you have to do this if, if the clay's been setting. Uh, it has to be. This has to be done uh, to get the clay ready. And so I'm wedging this piece of clay on a, a, a clay wedging table, and uh, then I'll roll it up and put it on the wheel and start the throwing process so that you can see uh, what it's like to, to throw a piece of powder on the wheel. And this is a mixture of clay. Uh, uh, part of this clay uh, has been washed and uh, the other part didn't have to be washed because it's already been prepared for the ceramic supply uh, uh, company. And so this is a mixture of clay, some of it uh, local clay that's been washed, that I washed in my clay washing uh, process that I've got outside and, and then I mix that clay in with this other clay that's been uh, prepared commercially uh, and uh, that's what we've got right here so we're gonna take this piece of clay now usually slap it down on the table about 24 times two dozen times to get it pretty well uh, ready to be put on the wheel. And uh, so we've got pretty well probably knocked all the air out of it by now and uh, I'm going to roll it up into a, into a ball. This process is called kneading and that's uh, the way that they used to do bread whenever they uh, used to do that the old fashioned way so this is the same kind of process same technique and uh, so we've got the bottle of clay ready to go on the wheel this is called a bat we put the bat on on the wheel this is called the, the wheel is called the wheel head or the it's also called the head block Turn the wheel on. So we've, we've uh, placed the bat on the head block. And now we throw the ball of clay on the bat. This is called a chip. It's a flat piece of stainless steel that will be used in the, in the process. So now we're going to center the ball of clay process this step is called centering and it simply puts the clay on the wheel axis it, it puts it in the in the in the center or on the center and gets it ready to go to the next step this is still centering kind of like a second step I have to keep water thrown on the clay to keep it lubricated, keep it from getting dry. Now we're going to open the ball of clay. This process, is, this step is called opening. And uh, we put a bottom in it. And I generally I run my thumb across the bottom about three times, which pretty well 
keeps me from ever having any bottom cracks where the clay cracks across the bottom of the pot. That's a common problem that uh, a lot of potters have. So now we're going to bring the clay up. and uh, put a top on it here. I'm gonna do what's called a palm draw right here. Got some wobble in there because that I'm not as steady as I need to be. My hands are not as steady as they need to be. Um, we'll try to get the wobble out of it in between here and the end of the process. Do a second palm draw. Then we're going to uh, do a push up. This is finished. We hope to have a, a vase get the top in good shape. Now we're going to do what's called a knuckle draw. This is called a knuckle draw. which is a traditional, this is the traditional way. Uh, the uh, term knuckle draw is a term used by traditional potters, uh, probably not used by much by contemporary potters. Now we're going to do a second push up. Settle the top down again. Try to keep the top in good shape. Now we're going to take the chip. First thing is to trim the excess clay away from the bottom of the uh, pot. In this case, a base. Trim the excess clay off and get ready to shape this piece of pottery. most important thing is continuous motion. You don't want to let the uh, uh, the pot uh, become uh, weak because of hesitation. When, when the draw is started it needs to be continuous motion until the draw is completed. We're going to do a second draw with the chip. Still trying to pull the clay. Very tricky. It's easy to uh, mess up when it begins to, when the clay begins to thin out this way. It's easy to mess up and let the pot collapse and fall down, which is discouraging when that happens. So on this one we're not taking any 
any uh, unusual risk as I might do if I was not doing this for a uh, video. I would probably, if, if I was not being videoed here, I would probably take more chances and more risk trying to get the uh, clay stretched to the maximum. But in this case, we're not going to try to to be too extravagant. We're just going to settle for this right here as the shape. Now the next step is to take a sponge, go down into the bottom of the piece and get the water out of the bottom. Because unless if we don't do that, then the bottom is going to crack. Um, even though I packed it uh, the way I generally do, uh, the bottom, the water still has to be got out of the bottom, or the bottom will crack bad, real bad when it dries out. So we'll get the water out and kind of try to get a little bit of the of the water to slip that is off of the sides of the pot. Now we're going to take and, 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 and finish the top of this base, which is something you have to be very careful with because otherwise everything can go wrong and it can be one of them sad endings to the story where you lose the piece of pottery by trying to be too to take it too far so what we're doing right here is finishing the top Now we're going to take and get all the moisture, all the, uh, the slip, the, uh, uh, water away from the bottom of the base there. And then we're going to take the sponge and we're going to take the, uh, to go down the outside of the pot with the sponge to kind of get all of the slip off of the Outside slip is the word that's used for the uh, thin clay mixture that's, that's uh, on the that forms on the outside of the pot and on the inside. It helps keep the the clay lubricated so that the pot can be turned. But then you want to get it off of the piece or get most of it off of the piece to help keep the piece from deforming and collapsing. So now we're going to do uh, a um, another thing to the pot. If I can find this little plastic uh, picnic fork that I used to do it with, right here's one. This is a plastic picnic fork. And we use this to uh, uh, incise is the uh, contemporary word, but in traditional pottery you would just say you're going to scratch the pot. So we're going to slow the pot down and take the picnic fork and start this and then we're going to come up again the side of the pot with the picnic fork. and. Uh, when everything goes right, uh, the line runs back together so that you can't hardly tell where the scratch starts and where it stops. In this case, uh, it's not exactly perfect. You can kind of tell where, the, where the, the, the scratch joins together right there. So that completes the pot. The pot's completed now, and, and uh, that's the end of the process. I hope that you enjoy watching this uh, video of, of this uh, piece of pottery being uh, turned on the wheel.